What's up bikers, I'm Johnny Thompson from Fit for Racing and this is not your usual video. This is actually me talking through my recent hair transplant. <laughs> How would you describe my hair deterioration over the last 15 years? <laughs> Dramatic. Has it put you off me? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> if there's something in your life that's upsetting you, or your wife, and you have the power to change it, what are you waiting for? Follow me as I take back my hairline through the ups and downs, really, really weird on the back. pains and excitement as I embark on my hair transplant journey. Goodbye, bald head. Bye. Love you. We are on the road to Manchester Airport and then an early flight to Istanbul. I must say this is the nicest transfer vehicle I've ever been in. The transfer from the airport to the clinic was about half an hour. They got me booked in and a blood test and cardio test. That all took about an hour and then straight back to the hotel and got straight out into Istanbul. And I must say, what a city. Actually, I'm gutted that I didn't book to come a couple of days before to explore Istanbul properly. I'll see you in the morning for procedure day. I got a ticket the day before to say what time I was going to be picked up at the hotel, which was great. And we went straight into pre-tests before the transplant. So that included a skin depth test with an ultrasound, and that would determine the depth of the implants. Then we took a closer look at the hair quality, how many hairs were coming out of the same follicle, and also Single the density. One, double ones, yeah. we have triple, here. That information was put into a package. That then went to the doctor, the head of Elite Hair, and I got the pleasure to work through what I expected and what was possible. So looking at the donor area being a little bit less dense and the area being a bit smaller than expected, I went in expecting to get 5,500 transplants, but with his experience, we went for 4,200, including taking some out of my beard. That was really reassuring because they're particularly hot on telling you what is the best way forwards versus just doing what you expect. So then we spent some time looking at the shape of my hairline, where my muscles were. So by lifting my eyebrows, you can see where the muscles are activating. We can't implant into those because they'll either fail or just look silly. And then the doctor spent time drawing out where they were going to do the implants, taking from and then also where the implants were going to. So I said it was important for me to have a good hairline at the front so with that, he graded it with density from a four at the front and then naturally in my hairline and the way my hair and head is, a three, a two, and then finally a one. So then it would look natural, well blended, it would grow and I'd be able to style it the best at the end. After signing that off and saying I was happy with the lines and the shape of it, I then got my head shaved by a barber. I then went into the pre-op. I got a nice gown, I was comfortable. And then into the operating room where, honestly, I must have seen about 30 different people, each one with a specific job. So there's anaesthetists, doctors, people that were removing the hair, people that were sorting the hair, and then an, even a different group of people that were then inserting after. The operating room was absolutely amazing. It was a brilliant view of Istanbul out the window. They put the drugs in and I fell asleep within about 10 seconds. Unique to Elite Hair, which actually is there right behind me, biggest hair clinic in the world. They basically put you to sleep to then do the most painful part, which is the injection of the anesthetic. Once that's in and you wake up, then hopefully it'll be pain free, certainly for the procedure. So when I woke up, I was already face down and they were starting to remove the hair from the donor area at the back. You were aware of what was going on at the back, but you couldn't feel anything at all. It is wild to say, but you just felt the movement in your neck when they were applying pressure to your head. So you were aware that people were doing things, but there was no pain whatsoever. Three and a half hours in, they'd removed all of the donor area from the back of my neck and my beard. 
Then I managed to go to the toilet quickly and grab a lunch, but I did get it down super quick because my intention was to get this done without interruption so that then I could be out as quickly as possible. Oof, today has been a long day. I went into the room at half past 11. I think it was half past seven I came out, so a big eight hour shift in the room. Now tonight, my only job was to get back to the hotel, try and sleep, and be picked up again at 20 to nine tomorrow. Elite Hair have an app, and then it's telling you what tablets to take at what time, and then it's giving you what's happening on the next day. So this has been fantastic. What goes on tomorrow, we'll see. The next morning I woke up, I had a shower. I was very sensitive to getting any kind of moisture on my head. Getting dressed wasn't easy, but then I packed my bags and made sure that I had loads of water to stay hydrated. Sleep last night was mediocre, uh, nearly six hours. To be honest, it's more positional than pain. Better sleep than I expected. I can have coffee today, which I'm so excited about, particularly in Turkey. During breakfast, I followed the app's guidance and I took all the medication that I needed that morning, which was an anti-inflammatory, a low dose antibiotic, and also some paracetamol for pain. After breakfast, I went back to the clinic where I had a hair wash and got given the band to put on. And following that was a very thorough debrief. This is where they gave me all the products that I'd be using over the next few weeks. Also, advice from the doctor on do's and don'ts. Things like when to exercise again, when to wash your hair again, how to look after your hair, when to wear hats. Basically everything I needed to know to get the best result. Then it was home time. Another outstanding transfer to the airport and a late flight back to Manchester. <laughs> <laughs> it was a bit of a shock for the kids <laughs> they knew what i was going to get done but i think the sight of it because it was very raw it was red and swollen you know they were a little bit dubious about it she doesn't look physically correct <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't look right what do you mean it doesn't look physically like symmetrically correct no no it, it, no i know it's, it's like really really weird on the back and i really hate it <laughs> no, it's, What's wrong with the back? I'm, I'm just really squeamish. The first day back home was hair washing time with the products that were provided by Elite Hair. We got lotion and foam. This lotion is hydrating. I need to leave it on for 30 minutes for the first time. I need to do this daily for, I think, ten, the 10th ten day. I have a day off before then removing the crust so you let it dry out for one day and then take the crust off where that should be the worst part over you dab the lotion all over treated areas the top super sensitive because obviously the hair's embedded in there we don't want to disturb it so that it falls out there's like a little bit of natural yep. leakage of the saline lovely yeah now Foaming shampoo. This will be applied and then left for five minutes. Applying the foam super lightly just to make sure that you don't disrupt any of the hair. Then rinse and remove with kitchen towel. That's the most concerning part, is like the, the content. A bit wet. So obviously the fluid is putting pressure on, which is pushing out some of the uh, plasma or the saline that's in there that's creating the little droplets so i'm pretty sure that's normal right band going back on elite hair first few days i had to wear the headband every day and sleep with it around my neck and periodically massage so that then the swelling would disperse around night three it's time to take off the headband which i am very looking forward to ba -ba -da -ba. <laughs> you can get like the shape of where the headband was. Darling, there's no missing it. <laughs> My scalp looks raw here and you can clearly see the extent of the swelling, but honestly it wasn't that bad. It wasn't painful and the swelling soon dispersed after a bit of massage. And this was the third night, which was probably the worst for how it looked. This is day four last night. I took off my headband for good. 
Still sleeping on my back for a few more nights, paying particular attention to high blood pressure, excess sweat. So I'm keeping cool. I think you could probably do what I did, fly out on, we fly out on Wednesday, get back on Friday, Saturday and Sunday chill, and then you could probably work an office job on Monday. Uh, so it's not that much time out of your life. This is day six, last night was the last night with the neck brace for sleeping on my back. I can't wait to sleep on my side tonight. If you can see, I've got some bruising on the top of my head here and coming down my neck, which doesn't look too bad, but this is gonna be the first time that I'm actually gonna go out with my wife for lunch. So we're gonna see how comfortable I feel, but in all honesty, I think I'm just gonna forget about it because it looks like more of an extreme shaved head versus hair transplants at the moment. The next few days the crust got progressively more and it wasn't as itchy as I thought it would be. Saying that, I was looking forward to getting it off. Yeah, I really don't like your hair all scabby. Will it be like that when your hair grows away? No. No, no that goes away tomorrow. I get it all washed off. And then I can tickle it. So this is day 11, which is crust removal day, which I've been super excited for because progressively I've been getting more and more crust, which I don't mind being outside with it. And it just doesn't look great. The crust is coming off once that's done. Oh dear. <laughs> once that's done, once the crusts are off, I feel like it'll be a relief. And then I can go back to using normal shampoo, which means I can go under a shower, which is mega. I'm so looking forward to that. To be doing a little circular motion. I mean, I want to get my nails in, but you absolutely can't. This right here marks the end of the half part. Oh, it looks horrible. <laughs> there we are. Count them up. And we've got 4,200 here. Taking one for the team. You can see it's like it's actual, there's actual hair growing. Whoa! How's it look? Gorgeous. Yeah? Let me really tell like how it's gonna be. So this is my hair now after two weeks. Elite hair has been absolutely amazing from start to finish. Communications before going, all of the information on flights, the transfers were unreal. Everything was so easy. It's like having a tour guide where you know that every minute of every day is accounted for and people are looking after you. That's the point is that it makes it easy, painless. You're in and out in three days, back to your normal life with your new hair. As a one-stop shop for my hair transplant, it has been fantastic. This obviously isn't the end. I now have to wait a few months through the shedding process and regrowth, but we'll check in then and see how my hair is, maybe on about six months, and we'll see what kind of style I go for. But until then, if you've got any questions, add them to the comments or visit the link that I'll post in the description below and then you can find all the information you need, even quotes on number of transplanted hairs and how much it would cost if you were to go. So click the link, otherwise I'll see you in our next video with new hair. <laughs> Peace.